The walls are coming down in Epcot and the newest attraction is almost ready to open. We were lucky enough to attend a special preview event for Journey of Water inspired by Moana and we're bringing you along with us right now here on DFP Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. Now, Journey of Water, inspired by Moana, is the brand new attraction in Epcot, set to open in fall of 2023. This interactive walkthrough lets you play with water as you learn about the water cycle. I know, it's not as exciting as a new ride, but believe me when I say this is a welcome addition to the park. This kind of gets back to Epcot's roots of edutainment and provides a beautiful and really relaxing attraction that hopefully won't have too long of a wait after the initial opening excitement. As I said, Journey of Water is an open quite yet for the public and Disney still hasn't dropped that official opening date. But we were lucky enough to attend a special preview with one of our cast member friends. Cast member previews are scheduled to run until September 22nd and there's currently no info about annual pass holder or DVC previews, but those are a possibility. With those dates in mind, this attraction will likely not officially open to all guests until later in September or even October. Okay, so let's jump in. Or start walking. This is a walkthrough attraction that Disney has previously described as a lush exploration trail. It's located in the World Nature section of Epcot, the front of the park between Spaceship Earth and the Land Pavilion. It's meant to enable guests to play with magical living water while also learning about the importance of the natural water cycle and preserving water as a resource. You literally do get to play with the water, which yes, means you could get wet, but more on that in just a second. First and foremost, Journey of Water is definitely educational, but that's hidden behind some fun interactive elements. You'll learn all about the water cycle and how water plays such a crucial role in our world. At some points, you're going to need to move around your hands in the right places for the water to make some of its playful effects like jumping. In other parts, you may be able to experience water in a more passive but still engaging way by running your hand under some water streaming down from rocks to trigger sound effects. Throughout the attraction, there are parts where you may just play with certain water features, other sections where you need to perform actions to get the water to respond, and some places where joy Joining together with fellow guests to do a certain motion may actually produce a more exciting result. Disney's created this walkthrough so that you can choose to, but you don't have to, get wet, and you can kind of control how wet you get, though you probably won't get soaked unless you're really, really trying. The wettest part is the waterfall, which is actually designed to part, and the water stops if you walk slowly through. If you want to get wet, you can race through it, and it won't have time to stop. There's also a splash pad area that kids will definitely want to jump around in, and they will get soaked there. There are a few sections where water shoots up from the ground, but they are very obvious and can be avoided if you don't want to deal with changing your socks. And in a few very wet sections, the path diverges so that guests who do not want to get wet can continue on the dry path and those are marked. There are only two sections that have a dry path area, a water walkover and that walk through the water curtain. So you will basically have the same experience no matter which path you choose. So if you prefer to stand back and not engage in any of the interactive elements, which primarily just involve getting your hands wet, you can enjoy this experience and stay completely dry and not feel like you've missed out. The walkthrough has eight sections with different elements and teaching moments. The first is rain. Now this first section of the walkthrough and the water cycle features misty rain effects and interactive strings of water that play music. The next is the stream. So as the water continues its journey through the attraction, you can wave to it and trigger some jumping water effects. Then you've got wetland. Now the wetland section is mostly just a teaching moment about water loving plants, though there's an opportunity to splash through some small puddles and a dry path if you'd prefer not to. Then it's spring. Now this interactive feature wasn't working when we were there, but typically you'll hold your hand above the water and it'll jump up to meet you. Next is land, which teaches you about how the land is actually shaped by water as you pass through some caverns. This is where you'll find that waterfall, that water curtain. Remember, walk quickly if you want to get soaked, slow down to let the waterfall part for you, or choose the dry side to avoid it altogether. Moving on, you'll find Tafiti, who sits on the edge of a small lake in the lake section. This section focuses on water conservation and some great photo ops. And river. River has some jumping fountains that follow the path and this is where you'll find that splash pad area. Ocean is where the walkthrough ends. This completes the cycle as you send water back into the sky by jumping on a symbol on the ground to trigger waves of water that shoot into the air. But wait, there's also sky. So as you exit the attraction, you'll pass through that final stage of the water cycle as you're surrounded by mist heading back to the sky. Now we did bring our Magic Band Plus to see if any of the events would be triggered by the Magic Band Plus. We did feel a little bit of vibration on our wrist from the Magic Band Plus, but we don't think that those elements are necessarily working with the Magic Band quite yet. They may in the future. 
Now let's talk about some hidden details. Each section of the journey of water features some hidden Easter eggs you should keep an eye out for during your walkthrough. In rain, Tefiti is carved into one of the rocks. In stream, Maui's hook is in some of the rocks. In wetland, Hei Hei is carved on a rock and there are little Hei Hei footprints on the ground. In spring, Pua is carved into one of the rocks. In land, Moana's boat is in the rocks. In ocean, you'll see baby Moana, Tamatoa, and some Kakamora in the rocks. And you should see Moana in the rocks after this section. By the way, the Kakamora do spit at you, so be careful. And while not a hidden detail, because there's no way you could miss her, the large Tafiti is around 15 feet tall and made of over 3,000 pieces of foliage. All right, here are our tips. So this is definitely going to be popular when it first opens, and you can expect lines to enter and a good crowd once you're inside, especially at those interactive water features. As things look right now, and in speaking with cast members at the attraction, it seems the Journey of Water will just operate with a standby line. So they haven't yet um, announced or confirmed any virtual queues and no official word on whether or not this would be a Genie Plus attraction. There's currently no setup for it, so it seems unlikely that it'll get added. This attraction is wheelchair accessible, so just be aware that some parts of the path are wet, but these are avoidable. There is a bathroom that can be accessed from the attraction. There are brand new single person restrooms with baby changing tables. You're going to find them about halfway through just before you enter the lake section. You know, we love a good bathroom here at DFB. There's also a water bottle filling station at the entrance of the walkthrough. If you're planning to get wet or let the kids run through that splash pad, you may want to bring a change of clothes or socks, though most people can and will stay dry. And there are a few benches throughout the walkthrough if you want to have a seat and just enjoy the serene vibes or people watch a little bit. This walkthrough is seriously stunning and the Imagineers did a great job, particularly with the landscaping to make it feel like an oasis in the middle of a theme park. Most of this walkthrough is in the sun and there are several shaded sections with trees and sail shades. Shade, of course, will change throughout the day based on where the sun is, but you should find a few shaded areas throughout, though not a ton. And when we went, one of the interactive water features was not working. Hopefully these issues will be fixed during the preview stage and that may be why the previews are running for so long. So is Journey of Water a must do on your next Epcot experience if it is open? Well, our reporters who went to Journey of Water really enjoyed it and would wait 30 to 45 minutes to experience it, at least when it first opens. This attraction is gonna be popular. It's the newest thing in Disney World and new will always draw crowds, especially with it opening as we head into Disney World's typical busy season during the holidays. While it's still hot out, and let's be real, it can still be pretty hot in December and January in Florida sometimes, this walkthrough is really delightful because there's a lot of misty walks and misty areas to help you cool down and you can get as wet as you want if it's a super hot day. Kids can work out some pent up energy by jumping around in the splash pad area and adults can just relax and enjoy some seriously gorgeous plant life. Journey of Water kind of has something for everyone and once the initial hype dies down, it should be a great way to spend some time between rides or before a dining reservation. It really does harken back to some old Epcot attractions with that focus on edutainment, but by including Moana, it feels a little more exciting, especially for kids. I personally think this is a great addition to the park. It gives you something to do that likely won't involve extra planning for a virtual queue or crazy long lines or reservations. Is it the most exciting thing to open in Disney World? No. Is it enjoyable and will I visit again and again for a little relaxation in the middle of an Epcot day? Absolutely. This is also a wonderful addition to Epcot for kids especially. I don't know if you've been to Epcot with little kids or with toddlers or with five-year-olds, six-year-olds. There's less to do there for them than you might think and you also sort of have to keep your kids contained a lot of the time so they're not running around and running into other people. I've always historically gone to the seas with Nemo and friends that whole area because there's often some space there aren't that many people in there in the aquariums and I've been able to kind of let my kids run a little bit up there not run but you know explore a little bit and I think that's another good use of this particular space this Moana walkthrough your kids are going to be able to be a little bit more exploratory you're not going to have to, you know, tell them to stop running and get out of the way of people. They're going to be able to experience this at their own pace and with a little autonomy, which is awesome for kids to have in these types of theme parks, because a lot of times they just have to do what you tell them over and over again, right? So having a little bit of autonomy there is going to be huge and it's going to be really, really fun. 
So if you want to be the first to know when Journey of Water will officially open or to stay up to date on all the latest Disney Parks news, you can sign up for our completely free newsletter. We've got reporters in the parks every single day. We've got an awesome team of writers and editors breaking Disney news on the daily, and we make sure that our newsletter subscribers get that info first. You'll find the link to sign up in the description just below the video. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for joining us at Moana Journey of Water, and thank you so much for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.